And specifically looking at the current interest rates hike, you know, and with the lack of affordability in South Africa and specifically also um, um, the, the rental market, what are some of the impacts or the things that are happening because of this? So you started off with some really good tips um, around understanding affordability. Um, it is to consider your moving costs, but also considering your deposit, what your cash flow looks like. What is happening inside the South Africa's rental housing market? In a world where being a Mr. Know-it-all can land you in the red, we'd rather keep you in the know. I'm talking facts, the latest updates, and the hottest property news. You will hear it here first. From the industry's top minds, this is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Welcome. Congratulations to our winner, Glad Shirinda, for winning yesterday's 500 Rand cash prize. Be like Glad and join the conversation on Facebook so that you can win that 500 Rand cash. So you found your dream apartment and you are wondering, what can I do to ensure that I don't make this dream into a nightmare? Before you pop that bottle of champagne, we've got property no-nos to make sure that you don't land up in hot water. So here they go. Number one, skimming through your lease. You definitely don't want to do that because you are going to initial every page. Number two, overlooking utilities and amenities. Number three, taking on repair costs. You definitely don't want to do that. If you didn't break it, don't fix it. Number four, investing in expensive furniture too early. Number five, neglecting moving costs. Bottom line, when you are looking for an apartment, do your research. Watch out for, those, for these property no-nos so that you can make a good decision. You will definitely thank us later. Our guest tonight on the show has over 14 years of experience as a consumer and marketing executive. He's deeply committed to the use of cost industry skills, knowledge, and expertise to ensure business growth and innovation. He also knows a thing or two about credit and the rental housing market. Viewers at home, help me welcome the head of marketing and sales at TPN Credit Bureau, Valdu Marcus. Valdu, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening to me and thank you for that kind introduction. It's a great to be with to join you in studio. Thank you so much. Um, let's jump right into our conversation tonight and tell us um, on a day to day, how does your day look and what are some of the things that you get to do as the head of marketing and, and, and consumer? So um, at Credit Bureau, there's, there's, the day is never the same. Um, we've, we focus on key things um, to ensure that both landlord and tenant is protected from a compliance perspective. Um, and then, of course, we also, our core business is to collect um, rental payment behavior across the industry. And it's from a small landlord um, with a single tenant all the way to listed property funds on the JSC and how those tenants b both on a commercial but also on a residential pay um, their rental. This, of course, great, gives us great insight into the sector in terms of escalations, vacancies, and, of course, trends to help the um, industry as a whole to um, make better decisions. Sure. And, you know, we are talking about um, the, the different um, things that are happening right now in the industry and specifically looking at the current interest rates hike, you know, and with the lack of affordability in South Africa and specifically also um, um, the, the rental market, what are some of the impacts or the things that are happening because of this? So you started off with some really good tips um, around understanding affordability. Um, it is to consider your moving costs, but also considering your deposit, what your cash flow looks like. Um, what's, what we've seen in the, in the property sector, especially within the residential market, is COVID has really brought on some de-escalations, effectively meaning rent year on year has become slightly cheaper. However, um, the last quarter of 2021, and we're expecting it to continue, is that we're going to see escalations to increase. Now, the interest rates are increased because of inflation, and we've seen inflation creeping up to 5.9%. What does that mean? Is that escalations will soon follow within the residential um, rental market. 
And further to that, as we're already seeing that the property inflation, therefore, should you be interested in buying, is already bro broke the 5% mark. So considering that affordability one and also how we, we expecting um, salaries to increase um, just around CPI is that affordability tip is critical to ensure that you move into the right property. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, a couple of months ago, the, the finance minister of South Africa gave us the budget speech and we know that there's going to be changes there. And even in the consumer market, um, talk to us a little bit more what this means for someone who's got a short term lease, a long term lease. Are there any nips in the butt that they can start doing now to make sure that they don't, you know, get adversely affected by this? Well, it is, it's such a difficult one. I think um, understanding what is your core expenses. If we look at um, the general South African, they're spending almost 80% of their salaries by the 7th of each month. Mm -hmm. Top of that list is either a bond repayment or it is your rental payment. Then second to that is, of course, transport, food, medical, etc. So it leaves very little space should we start seeing a jump in short-term loans, credit card interests. And we've seen the last uh, 50 basis points really going to make an impact on the uh, pockets of South Africans. So yet again, when you look at short-term um, credit, be very careful. Um, it's going to become more and more expensive in the short run. Um, uh, and we, ex we expect that to continue all the way to the end of the year. So be very, very careful before you overextend yourself. Try and save as much as possible where you can. Um, the one upside about COVID and the hybrid working model is you might not always have to travel into work. We've seen the petrol price. Um, it's expected to increase even more. So consider maybe working from home a couple of days and that will save you um, some travel, um, travel cost um, and that you can invest again into your um, residential property. Remember to talk to us on the Facebook feed, send us those questions, comments, send this conversation to anybody you think will benefit from hearing what we're talking about tonight. The conversation tonight is about anybody who's in, the, who's in the property industry, if you are a tenant, if you are somebody who is a landlord and you are thinking about some of these things and um, looking at even um, renting your property out, these are good insights that you need to know. Coming back to the conversation, let's let's bring it back and talk about um, taxpayers and some of these affordability um, things that they can they can do in terms of um, easing, you know, the concerns and even allowing them even to 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 do a little bit more with their money or allowing their back to go a little bit further. Are there any implications that came from the budget speech that could help um, someone who is currently in the in the rental market? I think the, the, the key highlight um, from the finance minister was that we didn't see an increase in personal tax. Um, and that is really to stimulate the economy. People can spend more. Um, and that was due to the better commodity um, taxes that was received. And then we've seen um, the finance minister really helping the commercial property market by not increasing commercial tax. Um, and that is due to the bad performance. Um, of course, it is recovering um, and it's recovering um, relatively um, quickly compared to what we expected. So it is really the finance minister had a, had a very good balance between say, saying, let's put, ensure that we don't take any more money away from the consumers and then also helping businesses to hopefully use that money to increase jobs. That is key. Um, to me, we can't labor it enough. We, we need to see more jobs created in this economy. Um, Interesting, we, we saw sad to say, is that we've seen a decrease in full-time employment. Mm. Um, Part-time employment, however, has seen an increase. So the way we um, earn a living has, is also changing in our economy. And again, for a landlord, for instance, consider that uh, when you take on a tenant, it's not just about full-time employment. It is also about total income that they receive, as people had to make um, plans to, of course, earn a living. Sure. And let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, people who are already in the market and maybe someone is living in a house and they're they're starting to anticipate that they might not be able to keep up with the rental amounts. Um, are there any specific things that they could do for them not to end up landing up in the red? You know, because I think the best thing about it is that um, we can we can try and be preventative in, in our approach, because the moment you are in the red, it's both a disadvantage to the person who is a tenant and a landlord. So is there any advice for these two categories of players in the industry now of things they could do to help them um, push this forward? We always say communication. As soon as you discover that there is a challenge, um, the key focus is um, to please reach out to your landlord. Start communicating to them. 
tell them what the situation is and um, be open and honest. You know, most, most landlords do not want to lose a good tenant. So if you've paid well and you've maintained the building and you've looked after it and you adhere to the rules and regulations, um, most landlords will be open to say, all right, what can we do to ensure rental comes through? It is, however, also important to understand the landlord's perspective. There's usually bonds to be repaid, rates, taxes, electricity, water. Um, so it might not be that you pay on the first of every month, but please communicate clearly so that it also does not affect your credit rating within TPN, because should you then decide to move to another um, property, um, the new landlord will, of course, see um, how you've paid and how you've behaved in your pay um, rental payment behaviors. Sure. Um, I like the fact that you were bringing um, uh, TPN in and um, this track record coming in. How much does it impact when one wants to move out of the rental space and maybe even go into acquiring property because um, situations and circumstances of people are very different. Some people are renting while they're property owners because it's whether it's cheaper or they're doing it for investments and all of those um, case scenarios. What would you say um, they could do in, in order for them to either if they're already in the case where um, they, they are, their name has already been listed or they, the, to, to keep the process from not happening? What, what would you say for those two? So we collect payment behavior and it stretches back up to five years. Um, we all have sure. to face the reality of COVID. Mm. Um, and in COVID, um, people fell behind on payments due to um, lack of salaries, um, uh, salary freezes. So when a landlord, and we, we, we run quite a lot of training and education around it, is to say, when you look at a new tenant, don't just look at the past six months or 18 months. Look at the entire track record of that individual. Um, if they completely paid um, their rental on time every month for two years prior to the pandemic, then you know it's an isolated incident. See how quickly they recovered. From a purchasing bond behavior, um, the rental payment behaviors in South Africa that's, that we collect um, is started to be used as um, a risk model across uh, various commercial banks. And the reason for that is a lot of people pay their bonds or their rental first. So it's one of the best um, ways to understand um, the importance of maintaining a roof over your head. So in this case, um, when, when landlords or people are looking at extend or buying uh, additional property and they're looking at taking out bonds, etc. how you pay rental comes up, but also um, how your tenant within a property has paid to ensure that you receive the cash in and on time. Sure. Um, remember to send us your questions right here on, on the Facebook feed so that we can field them. There is a question that came through and it's specifically about vetting and I'm sure, uh, I, I hope that we can we can actually tackle it tonight and, and of course Valdo is to the best of your ability. Um, it's saying hope this this hasn't been addressed yet, it's, it's coming from Anele and um, they say how does one go about vetting the agents they are about to deal with the e the eaab um, is always very vague about getting information on the legitimacy of estate agents right so the ppra um, came into effect this this year and within that there's a bunch of new regulations that um, your estate agents have to adhere to for instance um, it was at the end of august it's now moved forward to the to, to june that estate agents must be registered um, and have a ffc um, and of course that the principal needs to be an nqf5 meaning that they are extensively trained in the in the legal environment um, above and beyond that there's additional regulations of course to get the ffc so when you um, uh, decide on choosing an agent, make sure that they are registered with the PPRA, make sure that they are registered with the PPA, and you have the right to ask for those for the proof. Sure. Um, I'll take you a little bit back there. And just for the first time, as somebody who's joining us for the first time, can you just take us through um, the acronyms, the PPRA and some of the other ones you mentioned? So the PPA is the Property Practitioners Act, yep. and uh, PPA is the Property Practitioner or Property Professional. And then the PPRA replaced the um, Estate Agency Affairs Board, or the acronym for that is the EAAB. So the Property Practi Practitioner Regulatory Authority replaced the Estate Agency Affairs Board. So they basically are um, mandated to regulate property professionals. And the definition has extended beyond just residential um, estate agents. It's now including commercial brokers. So if you deal with a commercial broker, they now also have to be registered with the Property Practitioner Real, um, Regulatory Authority. 
Thank you so much for that. And um, if you just joined us, we are still talking the rental, uh, the rental housing market. And Nompumele Lonjovu says, I can relate to most of these points and I'm now gaining insightful information. Remember, you do stand a chance to win 500 Rand cash for interacting with us in our comment section. Um, Valdo, I'll now bring our conversation to something that is that is really a lifelong um, argument in, in the property space where people talk about renting versus buying. And they talk about how the expenses and the, the maintenance expenses. What is your take and what advice would you have for somebody who currently is renting or would like to maybe um, buy or is just new and a novice in the property industry and is thinking about which one to go for? Um, what, what advice would you have for them? Well, at the end, is it ultimately boils down to your affordability. Um, but also, what is your long-term or medium-term strategy in terms of wealth creation? Property has historically been a very good way to create wealth. Um, and that's two parts. One, yes, you can show a rental return or an income, passive income through, or partially passive income. Um, of course, you know, landlords do have to fulfill certain obligations. But there's a partial way, there's a partial passive income that you can generate from a rental property. On the other side, although even though if you take out a bond to purchase it, it's a forced way of saving. So after the 5, 10, 15 years, you've actually acquired an asset that traditionally appreciates in value. So with those two things in, in mind, is understand what is your medium and long-term concept. If you've been a really good tenant for the past five, six, seven years, um, and you look at your affordability, there's always ways on private property to go and calculate what is um, what can you afford. So what is your monthly installments based on the interest rates? But please consider the, the rates and taxes, levies if it's applicable, um, maintenance. Um, do you want to go into a freestanding, which of course might not incur the high levies, but it does come with additional security costs. It might come with additional insurance costs, maintenance, um, slightly higher if you do it on your own versus if you work within a body corporate. That will give you an idea of what your budget is and what you can afford, and then go and find the right location. I think to lean into it is um, understanding the right location. Some areas um, we've seen a decline in property values um, for the past 10, 15 years, and then there's areas we've seen some incredible property capital growth. That means what you bought the property for uh, five years ago um, versus if you sell it now, what that value is. Um, and we run some analytics and um, that's usually available through one of our reports to show what are the capital growth is, what the kind of rental income is that you can get. So it's really about understanding what your strategy is and then decide the way forward. Um, and then, of course, affordability and understanding there is hidden cost. Do some research, understand what it is, rates and taxes in the area. Um, that in itself rates, um, please make sure you can find that out mm -hmm. um, from your local government, understand what those rates are and make sure that you provide for above inflation um, increase. Um, the same with utilities, water and electricity, um, it is, has been increasing the past couple of years above inflation. So when you do a take in CPI plus two or three percent, add that to your monthly bill and see if you can afford it. Definitely. And I think uh, important takeaways from that is affordability. Are you able to afford all the expenses that come with either renting or, 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 or buying to live in? So it's very important that you think about that. And some comments are coming through. And Kamohelo Ororiseng is saying, I love how we are tackling the different uh, information and topics on property. And thank you so much for joining us, uh, Kamohelo. It is an absolute pleasure to be bringing you on the past topics about property every single night. Before I round up our conversation tonight, let's talk about the impacts of COVID-19. You spoke a little bit about them in terms of sometimes these things being isolated incidents. And um, I really I really like the fact that we looked at it like that because it COVID-19 was a bit unexpected and it shook so many people's world. And um, unfortunately, it has had an impact even on rental income for, for a lot of people, a lot of um a lot of landlords are standing with vacant properties because people just couldn't afford them and left, you know. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about it in terms of what are the, some of those things that um, we, we can actively do, whether as uh, someone someone who is agent, an agent, uh, someone who is a tenant or even a landlord. What are some of those things we can actively do to make sure that we recover from COVID-19 and we, we start changing the way things are done? Mm -hmm. So I, I think the reality is that we're, we're starting to see that um, the economic shocks, both nationally and globally, is coming in hard and fast. We, we dealt with COVID and we dealt with it um, in a very decisive way. 
we did see a huge impact on our labor market and within the residential property market, we saw where our good standing attendance and good standing of like 81, 82% dropped to just uh, above the 72% mark. So we could definitely see that uh, people were struggling. Now we back up um, just, just um, over the 80% mark. So we're almost back to where we were pre-COVID. Um, of course, rentals are slightly lower in some areas, vacancies are slightly higher. We could, def we could see the, the change in, in escalations, what um, landlords used to get versus what they're getting now. So that was the first economic shock we're dealing with. Now currently we're dealing with the economic shock um, that is imported inflation um, from the Northern Hemisphere that was brought on due to the conflict in Ukraine, um, mm -hmm. but also the overheated uh, economies of the Northern Hemisphere, which um, increased a huge amount of stimulation during COVID. That means we're bringing in a huge amount of inflation through our fuel imports, um, international imports, and that ultimately filters down to the consumer. So, we have to brace ourselves and understand that these economic shocks are not completely over. We've dealt with COVID and although it's not completely over, um, you know, we, we, we've learned to live with it. And as the residential uh, market is recovering in that regard, and we see it even within the commercial market, the recovery is there. It's now to understand what is the right price. Um, and sure. landlords might not necessarily like to hear this, but sometimes it is to keep your rental at the same level, but keep a good tenant. At yeah. least you get the right cash coming. You get your cash flow is, is still healthy and you get the rental money coming in on time. So those are a couple of considerations. So when you then as a landlord look at a tenant is understand that how important is it to get your rental on time versus a one or two percent increase in, in, in rental. And of course, as I said, escalations um, have been lagging and there's a bit of catch up to do. Um, the cost of maintenance, repairs, utilities, which for the past couple of years, landlords have absorbed. Um, at some point, it needs to be uh, passed on to the tenants, although we expect it to be done more evenly and it's not a sharp increase. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that insightful conversation and um, thank you for taking our time to talk to us and we really, really appreciate it and have a great night. Thank you, Valdo. Thanks for having me. And to the rest of you at home, thank you so much for joining in on Facebook. Um, we have a winner and we are telling that up. And uh, thank you for showing us love and for commenting and interacting with us. We love doing this each and every weekday. And the drum roll can come in as I announce the winner of the 500 grand prize for the most interaction is the person is Nompumelelo Nlovu. Thank you so much, Nompumelo. Drop us an inbox to claim your prize. And join us again tomorrow for another night of an insight-packed episode. Don't forget to also like and subscribe to all our social media platforms. Thank you so much for joining us on the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi, and have a good night.